So, there I was, browsing the daily Pokemon Gen Word thread on Twitter, where people are having, you know, calm, friendly conversations about which Pokemon games are in fact good, and which are the worst creation of mankind. It of course never goes anywhere, since everyone's just saying that this game is the best because it's the one they played when they were younger. You know how the Gen 5 fans are. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Either way, a common thing you see is people shitting on Gen 1 and 2. You know, it's borderline unplayable. There's no reason to play it because of the remakes. It's a glitchy mess. It's uh, held together by duct tape. That's, that one's my favorite. What's even more sad is that there are actually people who are defending these games who come in and say, well, actually, it's fine because they were the first games. Like, I don't think that's the defense you think it is. Being the first at something doesn't mean you're good at it. So, yeah, Gen 1, Gen 2 aren't regarded very well. They're seen as just completely obsolete, aged poorly, all that, right? But I don't really think so. So today I'm going to be going over the common arguments or talking points or whatever regarding these games and kind of go over why they don't really hold up. First, let's go over the thing that is the easiest to address, which are the glitches, right? These games are very known for being really glitchy, which is kind of weird. I get Gen 1, but Gen 2 really doesn't have even that many glitches. Like, compared to other Pokemon games, it really isn't that especially glitchy. But I mean, I guess they just kind of get, you know, categorized together as just old Pokemon, and then they see, you know, Gen 1 glitches, so they assume Gen 2 must have glitches as well. You know, it's, it's almost like these people haven't actually played the games. But yeah, I agree. Gen 1 has a lot of glitches. I don't think that's really, you know, an opinion. It's kind of a fact. These games have a lot of wacky shit in them. However, I don't think that's really a problem. I've played through these games like 5 to 10 times, and the biggest glitch that I've encountered is the 1 in 256 glitch, which basically just means that you have a 1 in 256 chance of missing moves when you're not supposed to, right? Which, you know... Oh god. <laughs> if that if that makes the game unplayable for you, then I guess. But for me, I don't I don't think it's that big of an issue. It's you know, one in two fifty-six is not that common. These people seem to think that missing no is suddenly going to appear and hack into the Google home and blow up their smart fridge. Fucking missing no used. You aren't going to accidentally warp the credits, trust me. It's going to be fine. Your smart fridge will survive for now. Yeah, overall, the glitches are definitely there. However, if you just want to play the game normally without any kind of glitches, you 100% can. You're not forced to abuse glitches or break the game or anything like that. You can, but you don't need to. Next thing that I want to go over is uh, the balance of the game, right? This is very similar to the glitches. People talk about this, how like the game is so unbalanced, you know, bug types are so weak and psychic types are so broken and all that. And uh, yeah, who the fuck cares? Like, what, what does it matter? Like, actually, though. Like, if you're talking competitive, then I don't really know about that, because from what I've seen, people who play Gen 1 competitively generally seem to like how different it is, because it's so broken. And if you're talking in-game, then what the fuck does it matter? Oh no, Mewtwo is a psychic type and has a high base stat total. Motherfucker, you have a Master Ball. It doesn't actually affect anything, right? You can beat the game with a Pidgey. Overall, the glitches and balance issues of the game are things that are only issues on paper. If you're actually playing through the game normally, not, you know, trying to go out of your way to find glitches or whatever, then you're just going to have, like, a pretty normal Pokemon game experience. Like, it really isn't that radically different like people make it out to be. But the big question remains, why should you play these games when the remakes exist, right? And that's a fine question. And the answer to that question is sprites. Look at Weezing's yellow sprite. He's just like me. My favorite example of a early Pokemon sprite is Rhydon. Fucking look at it. It is so goddamn cool. It just looks fucking awesome. You know, when I look at this sprite of Rhydon, I think of this, uh, you know, illustration of like very, very early Pokemon of like when they were coming up with it. Like this is a fucking pocket monster right here. This looks fucking amazing. And then you look at like the modern sprites and it's just, this looks fucking boring. Like obviously we're getting into like a very, very subjective territory here, but fuck it. You can't convince me that you prefer Rhydon from like Fired or Leaf Green or Diamond and Pearl 
to ride on from Gen 1. Like, get the fuck out of here. One might even say that this one has soul. Let's look at Golbat, right? This one is, like, notorious for being really ugly and all that. But it's like, this one has personality. Then we look at, like, Diamond and Pearl one. What the fuck? This is just boring. You know, whether or not I'm going to use a Pokemon in a certain game depends on what that Pokemon looks like in that game. Now, of course, that isn't the only factor, but it is definitely a factor, right? And if I'm playing red or blue, I'm definitely gonna consider Golbat because it looks fucking cool. It has a lot of character. It looks very unique. If I'm playing Diamond and Pearl, do you, do you think I'm gonna use this thing? No, fuck no. Who the fuck would? It looks fucking boring. It's a Golbat. Here's another example. Golduck. Golduck looks fucking cool in the first gen games. It looks like a strong Pokemon. Then we go like Gen 2, still very good as well. I really like the Gen 2 sprites. Gen 3, it starts to look kind of like, like a middle form almost. And then by like Gen 4, it's like, who the fuck would use Golduck? It's fucking boring. This thing looks fucking weak. Another thing that people really like to bring up is the quality of life. Of course, Pokemon as a very, you know, long series has gone through a lot of quality of life changes where it has, you know, over time, certain things that people have found annoying or bothersome are removed, made easier or more convenient. Quality of life is this really weird thing where a lot of it on paper seems like a really good idea, but then if you add it all together, you start to realize that the games are just a lot less rewarding and I'm not necessarily saying that that's the case with like Fire Red Leaf Green or Heart Gold and Soul Silver, but what I am saying is that a lack of quality of life isn't necessarily a bad thing either. To kind of show this, I'm going to give you an example here. Let's say you want to go to the next city in whatever Pokemon game you're playing, and uh, there's a route before the city, and on that route there's a lot of grass, right? You're walking through that grass, and you're kind of anxious because you really don't want to run into a random encounter. You just want to get to this next city as fast as possible. You're, you know, just going through the grass. You're hoping that you don't run into any encounters. And whether you do or not, once you get past that patch of grass, you feel great, right? You feel like you've made it. You feel relieved. Now, if you really don't want to deal with that patch of grass, you can go to the store and buy repels. Now, you don't need to deal with it. And it was you who did something about it. You went to the store and bought repels because you didn't like the random encounters, right? Now let's compare that to Gen 8, where we can't compare it to Gen 8 because random encounters don't fucking exist. All of that, that whole interaction right there, that whole rewarding feeling fucking gone. I think overworld encounters are great. I, I think they're a good idea. I generally like seeing, you know, the Pokemon moving around the grass and shit, but it's not a straight up improvement. You're also losing something by doing this. And I think that applies to pretty much everything in video games. You can justify removing the entire video game with quality of life. Catching Pokemon is pretty annoying because like, I know I'm going to be able to catch it. I have like 50 Pokeballs. So why do I even need to do that? Why can't I just get the Pokemon automatically? Why do I need to battle this trainer? I know I'm going to beat them anyway. So why can't I just skip them? I know I'm going to be able to walk to this next town. So why can't I just teleport there? I know I'm going to be able to beat this game. So why can't I just automatically get the credits? You can get rid of the whole video game by getting rid of annoying things, right? Games are kind of annoying by design because getting through something annoying feels rewarding. And here's another example. I remember I was playing Pokemon Ruby. It was probably like the second or third playthrough that I was doing. And I just got to Portree City. I was thinking of going to the gym, but I looked at my party and realized that I'm not very well prepared. I, I don't remember the whole team, but I remember I had a Combusken that was level 33. And I felt that I should probably level up this Combusken a little bit to get it to evolve. So I went to the grass and I grinded levels until it hit level 36 and evolved into a Blaziken. Then I went on to defeat the gym. That felt great. That felt really rewarding. Compare that to my recent playthrough of Pokemon Shining Pearl, where I was battling some opponent, and then suddenly at the end of the battle, my Primplup starts evolving. I was really confused, not because I didn't know that Primplup evolved at level 36, but because I had no clue it was already at level 36. The last time I sent it out in battle, it was 29. It had gained 7 levels just sitting at the back of my party. That, that does not feel rewarding. That's the fucking final evolution of my starter Pokemon. And it just basically evolved off screen. <laughs> Might as well have, right? It That doesn't feel rewarding. That feels like nothing. And I think a lot of people would agree with that. However, if I say that grinding levels is actually kind of a good thing, 
they will go, well, no, I don't think so. That It's kind of annoying, right? You know, you have to kind of choose one here. And I think what people don't realize is that uh, there is no objective line as to what is too annoying and should be patched out by quality of life change. It is all dependent on the on the person playing, you know? Some people like me might be fine with a lot of stuff, but someone else might say that Gen 3 is unplayable because of the lack of physical and special split. Yeah, it's just uh, I think that the lack of quality of life doesn't necessarily make Gen 1 better, but it makes it different, and it definitely does not make it objectively worse. I think something like physical special split is like, you know, uh, people talk about it like it's this awful thing that makes the games unplayable, but I really don't think it is. Like it's uh, something that once you get used to the fact that the dragon type moves are special, which actually doesn't really matter in Gen 1 because there's only dragon rate. Um, once you get used to the fact that, you know, psychic type moves are special, electric type moves are special, normal type is physical, all that. Once you get used to it, it just kind of becomes second nature and it doesn't really matter anymore. You know, so if you've gotten used to how it works with the physical special split, then it can be a bit like weird going back to, you know, a time without it. But uh, I can't really understand it being like a complete deal breaker where you can't play the game w without it. I guess another thing is the movesets, which uh, I actually, I myself have made a video laughing at Gen 1 movesets. I think I kind of mentioned it in that video, but uh, I don't think uh, it's necessarily a bad thing that the movesets were so like limited because it also makes moves feel really special you know not every pokemon can just get off the best moves and because tms are only one time use moves like earthquake are really really valuable you don't want to just give it to every single pokemon on your team because you fucking can't the point that i've been making throughout this whole video is that all of these complaints about gen 1 and 2 are only a big deal on paper but if you play the games, you realize that none of this fucking matters. And the games have a lot of unique charm that makes them worth playing, even if you have played the remakes. Also, the Goldenrod department store in Hard Gold and Soul Silver doesn't sell the elemental punches. Imagine not having Thunder Punch on your Typhlosion and then talking about objective replacement. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you someday. Maybe. Bye.